where Arnie Schoenberg invented the 12-tone compositional system, it took the world by storm, redefining the way that composers composed music in the early 20th century. But one of his students, Anton Webern, quickly started playing with the technique, developing things outside of the 12 tones and starting to serialize other things such as instrumentation. Shortly after the war, new composers began taking the flame that Anton Webern had started and started creating total serial compositions. One such composer, Milton Babbitt, seen here, even created a Babbitt square, a matrix of all the possible 12 tone rows that can be created using a single tone row. But Milton Babbitt took it a step further creating total serial compositions, where he serialized not only the pitches, but also the dynamics, the articulations, and other such musical parameters so that they were all ordered and manipulated in a similar way. But how did he do it? How did he serialize everything? What were the techniques involved? What were the special aspects of this music that we need to know about? And most importantly, what did it sound like? Stay tuned. All right, so to get things started, just a small example. These are the first four measures from a piece by Milton Babbitt called Three Compositions for Piano. This is number one. And just to give you a sense of what this sounds like, since the newsreel wanted you to get experience with that, here it is. and so on. Now, this is totally serial in that there are obviously multiple tone rows going on, and you can see that the, the, the excerpt where I pulled this from actually has them labeled, and notice it says P0, so this is kind of that old school way of marking tone rows. We would, of course, mark this as P10 now instead of P0. But what you can see here is that the left hand has one row, and the right hand has a row that is transposed by a tritone. Now, the total serial aspect of this comes from the rhythms that Babbitt has used. And the rule he set up for this, and again, this is a very flexible system when it comes to not only manipulating the tone row itself, but anytime you add and uh, adapt it for non-pitch uses, there's going to be kind of a piece-by-piece piece trial you need to go through. In this case, what Babbitt has done is taken the notes, or the numbers, 5, 1, 4, and 2, and used those as his metric for what's happening rhythmically, at least here in the first four bars. What that means is, notice, starting with the B-flat in the left hand, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 notes, and that fifth note is then tied to the next note. Okay, So that means five came first in his sequence, followed by one, just a single note with a rest afterwards, then four, and that last note four is held out, and then two, and then that last note is held out. So in this case, there's a group of five notes, one note, a group of four notes, and then a group of two notes. Now if we proceed forward, we can see how that shifts. First it starts with a group of four notes, then two notes, then five notes, then one note. So that order of those numbers is serial, just like the notes are serial and can be rearranged in different ways depending on the situation. And you can see right from the very beginning here, Babbitt's used a bunch of different kinds of rows here. He's got the uh, obviously, the prime form of the row identifies P0 here, a transposition of the row here, then a retrograde version of the row starts, followed by, and then at the same time as a retrograde inversion form of the row. So this is just a small little example of what it means to be totally serial, in that the rhythms in this case are being serialized just like the pitch material is. We'll continue to talk more about this as we, as we keep going, but this is just a small taste, and in case you wanted to hear it again, here it is. Thank you. 